Welcome back to the Urban Farmyard. Today we're taking a bit of a departure from our animal related programming and we're going to get knee deep in some renovation. Today we're starting work on the kitchen. Jeremy, get out! When this city girl moved to the country, the first thing I had my eye on was the kitchen. I had moved from a beautiful house in the city and it had a high gloss white kitchen with loads of bells and whistles. So when I saw the kitchen in this house, I knew immediately that it was one of the things that was going to have to go. It didn't have to go, but you know what? I'm bringing a bit of city to the country here, so in my mind it had to go. Fortunately or unfortunately, when I was doing the final inspection, I discovered a gas installation that was illegal. There was a gas cooktop which was illegally installed, it didn't have any sign off and it was a fire hazard. So when I was going through the settlement process we negotiated a reduction in the price which gave me a little bit of cash to start work on the kitchen straight away. The thing I really needed to get out was that illegal hob because I couldn't cook in here safely. So what ended up happening is a renovation which I didn't think was going to happen for quite some time ended up being brought forward, which is super exciting. Now, what you're not going to see today is a before and after. What we're going to see is a before and during, because this is real life here. There isn't a budget to just rip the whole thing up and do everything all at once. So I'm going to show you how I'm progressively doing the kitchen as my budget allows. You're going to see some beautiful new things in here, but you're also going to see a whole lot of old stuff, because you know what? That's real life. But what you're going to realize is you can actually do kitchens progressively if you plan them carefully. So where this kitchen renovation started, was with a list of things that I really wanted in this kitchen. Now that was everything from I would really love a wine fridge, I want a really nice fridge, I'd really love a beautiful oven, but it also involved thinking about some solutions that I needed. With this number of animals in the house, I've got food bowls everywhere and I really didn't want animal bowls lurking around on the floors. I also didn't want bags of food everywhere, so I needed somewhere to store big bags of cat and dog food. I wanted somewhere to put my microwave that wasn't just on a bench. I wanted somewhere to easily access my baking things without them having to live in the oven. I wanted good deep drawers to put in my pots and pans, things that really made life accessible. From there I took my wish list and I turned it into a plan. Now my plan was to use as much of the existing cabinetry as I could because I discovered it was all bought off the shelf and they were all completely standard size. And while I really didn't like the colour of the doors on the existing cabinetry, the carcass itself was actually fine in some cases. So what I was able to do is remove the existing doors and put beautiful new high gloss white doors. Remember I had high gloss white in my last house and I really wanted to bring it with me here. But this became a little bit more complicated than I'd assumed. Some of the cabinets were absolutely fine, but when I got into other ones, I discovered that they'd been hacked by someone doing a DIY installation, and so I wasn't able to retain as many as what I thought I would be able to. However, we've still managed to retain some money by keeping some of them. The one big cabinet which I am keeping is the pantry. Now, it's probably not the most functional pantry. I know that the style of pantries has now changed quite a lot to make them more accessible, but the pantry was going to add a lot of additional cost if I was going to change it out. So I've made the decision to retain the existing pantry. What I don't like in the existing pantry though are the glass doors. It means that you can see all the packages and junk and disorganized shelves because you know what, it's a pantry, it's not the tidiest place. But so I don't really want to be able to see through the glass doors and see what's inside. So I've retained them at the moment but once I can afford to I'll be whipping those doors off and I'll be putting beautiful high gloss white doors which you cannot see through in their place. So having decided to retain the pantry and being able to retain a couple of the other cabinets, I then sat down and I figured out a plan. There were a number of big changes that I planned to make to the layout. One was the kitchen island 
was a long long way from the other bench on the other side it was about a 1.5 meter gap between the two and I decided I really didn't need that much space so what I decided to do was bring the kitchen island in half a meter giving me additional space in the dining and living rooms the other decision I made was to utilize this area behind me now originally there was nothing here it seemed weird that the kitchen was just kind of floating in the middle of nowhere um, it butted up against one wall at one end of the house but it just kind of stopped in the middle of the other wall so what I decided to do was turn this entire space into the kitchen and rather than having this vacant space I decided to move the hob and the oven and pop it on this wall here now I chose this wall here because I had in mind a beautiful oven that I really really wanted to introduce to this house. I've decided that this is likely to be my forever home. At some point I will be cremated and probably scattered in the river here and so I thought with this house I was going to make the decision to choose pieces that I absolutely loved. Now one of the functional pieces that people usually just put into a kitchen is an oven but I saw the most beautiful ovens I have ever ever seen and I decided I really wanted to make the oven a feature piece. The oven I chose is a Belling Richmond. It is completely new but it looks like an old style Arga and the amazing thing about these is when you choose them they come in a wide variety of colours or you can have them custom sprayed to the colour of your choice. So I went through my paint colour charts and there was one set of charts that I really gravitated towards and those were a set of charts created by New Zealand fashion designer Karen Walker. And on those charts, which I have used quite extensively in other renovations, um, was this beautiful smolt blue. So what I did is I bought the oven of my dreams, I will still be cooking on it when I'm 90, and I had it sprayed to this delicious smolt blue. And it is the feature piece in this oven. That's why I chose to put the oven on this wall, because it's an easily visible place. It's one of the first things that you see when you come into the kitchen, and you know what? Everyone comments on it. They all comment on it. Now this oven I particularly love. It's got an induction cooktop which means I didn't have to pay to get gas put somewhere else. I didn't have to pay to have it put on this wall. And it's got three different oven cavities which all do different things. We'll talk about the oven in more detail in another video I'm sure. Having moved the oven I then had a giant gap in the original kitchen island. I pulled out the original hob which was illegally installed. I pulled out the oven and I donated the to a local family. I then made the decision to juggle my budget and buy the cabinetry for the, for the new island. That would then give me a completely functional worktop without having to do the rest of the kitchen at the same time. What I decided to put in here basically came from a number of discussions that I had with friends who had done kitchens and the one thing they all said is if they were to do it again they would put in more drawers. They are far more accessible than trying to get things in and out of the back of kitchen cupboards. So I made the decision to do a full island of nothing but drawers. So we bought all the cabinets off the shelf from a local hardware store, bought high gloss faces off the shelf as well, and I decided to upgrade the closures or the, um, the runners to push to open ones. A friend of mine had done a kitchen a number of years ago and I absolutely loved the look of just clean white faces with absolutely no handles. So these ones have no handles and all you do is you push and they open up. They're really, really beautiful and you just push them again to close them. So three sets of drawers in the kitchen island. There's two other things that we put in the kitchen island as well which are designed specifically to accommodate the animals in the house. The first thing we included was this end panel. This is something that was on my wish list. I really didn't want food bowls lurking everywhere. So what we did is took an off the shelf cabinet and built this amazing end piece which has space for a water bowl and a food bowl. This means that everything's up off the floor and it's lovely and neat and tidy. 
The other thing we built in here was a bookshelf. I have never had space in a kitchen to put all my cookbooks and while this has become a bit of a dumping ground for random things at the moment because it's not quite finished, this is going to be where my cookbooks sit. I absolutely love it. The next thing we built in here at the other end is a place to store all the cat and dog food. Now what I did is I bought a rubbish bin kit off the shelf and had it installed here. So again, it's pushed to open. And there are two good sized bins which hold an entire bag of cat or dog food. So feeding the cats and dogs is now really simple. All I do is remove the bin. And with a tiny bit of mess, refill the bowl and then it tucks away neatly and tidily just like that. Now when it came to finishing off the kitchen island I needed to make two decisions. One was the bench top and the second was what to do with the kick panels and the casing at the back of the cabinetry. Now the bench top I know exactly what I want. I want a beautiful engineered stone but the reality is I don't have a budget for that at the moment. So instead what my builder did is he got a completely free piece of timber and we've polonked that on the top for the time being. Now it's not the most sanitary solution, it's not the most practical solution when it comes to spraying and wiping up messes, it's also not the most elegant solution but I decided I would rather not compromise on the bench top at this stage and I would just wait until I can afford the ones that I really want. This is just real life. When it came to the kickboard and the backing around the cabinet, I decided that this kitchen really needed some warmth and one way to bring warmth in was to add some wood. Everything at the moment is quite sterile. I've got polished concrete floors, I've got high gloss white cabinets, it just needed something warm. So rather than buying kickboards off the shelf, we went and bought TG&V instead and I had a builder install it for me. At the moment, the TG&V is completely bare. I haven't done anything with it. The reason for that is I haven't quite decided how I want to finish it. I definitely want to retain the natural wood color, but I haven't made a call on exactly how I'm going to seal it. So that's something that I need to do probably reasonably soon because it's been installed for a while. The last thing I added to the kitchen island is a PowerPoint. What I really wanted to be able to do was plonk my cake mixer or other appliances on the kitchen count on the kitchen island and be able to work there. The reason is the kitchen island overlooks the living room and I really wanted to be able to stand and work on that surface if I had guests. So it, all in all it works really well. So the final thing I've done at this stage in the kitchen renovation is the tiling. This is something that needed to be done in order to put the range hood up and so it was something that was prioritised in addition to the kitchen island. Now I was working on a budget and so I couldn't go and buy off the shelf tiles easily so what I did is I went into a tile wholesaler. It's a place that buys end of line and slightly damaged stock and they sell it off giant pallets in their showroom. Now it's the sort of place where you cannot go in with a very specific idea of what you want because it's not likely that they're going to have it. But if you're prepared to go and rummage and work with whatever's there, you can get some really, really good deals. So this tiled area cost a couple of hundred dollars all up I think. So the day that I went in I was lucky enough to find subway tiles. I absolutely love subway tiles. I had them in my bathroom in my previous house and I was so disappointed to be leaving them behind. But it turns out I haven't had to leave them behind because my tile wholesaler had subways with the most beautiful satin finish. And so I chose these gorgeous subways with a dark grey grout to kind of tie in with the black range hood and the black top of the oven and voila it looks absolutely amazing.
have it, stage one of the kitchen renovation. I hope this has given you some ideas for your place and I hope it's given you an idea of how you can manage a kitchen renovation without needing to spend all of your money up front. You really can do it in pieces. I think this is the ninth kitchen that I've done so I do have a bit of experience under my belt with these things and I really hope that that helps you to find an affordable way to upgrade your kitchen. That's us today, I'll see you back here tomorrow.